guys, so today I'm here with Anna Hello. and we are starting an exciting little series that we've got planned for this week. We're going to be uploading videos on both of our channels today, Sunday and Tuesday and it's kind of like a mini guide to vlogging and blogging. It is. So we're going to be doing alternate videos, one on vlogging, one on blogging on both our channels. So I'll put all the links below and explain at the end. Today we are going to do our tips to help how to start a beauty blog and it's kind of right from the beginning and then designing your blog, a bit about content. This is like quite a comprehensive guide to beauty blogging. Definitely. So when it first when you first come to like deciding on where to host your blog, there are quite a few places but I'd say the main two websites to pick from are blogger.com and wordpress.com and they are yeah. actually quite different. And luckily I use Blogger and Anne uses WordPress. Yay! So we can both kind of give like our idea of how it works. So with Blogger it's Google based so it means you can sign up with the same email that you use for YouTube and emails, anything like that. And Blogger's quite well known to be really easy user friendly so you can kind of design it all yourself it's all done by widgets and you can move things around and it's really easy to use once you learn how to do it you don't really need to know about html or coding or anything it's so easy because i used to use blogger yeah. and then i moved to wordpress so blogger is amazing but then because it's so easy it's almost quite restricted you can kind of only customize yeah. things to a certain point so i actually moved my blog from blogger to wordpress which wasn't too difficult to do however i have a very techie friend from uni who helps me. If you have a techie friend, they can come in quite helpful because personally I'm a bit of a tech noob. So WordPress, <laughs> I think you have to actually have your blog on a server. Can you tell? I have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah. basically the back end, you kind of just see the posts and the design is actually all HTML coding. So unless you kind of really know your HTML, you kind of, I can't personally yeah. customise my blog too much, so I just see the back end of um, all the posts. But you can customise it and make it look proper, proper swish. From a designer's point of view, there's a lot more you can do with WordPress. You can have yes. like the swishy movie things. <laughs> but saying that, if you have a really good designer, which I th my friend that helps me from uni as well, randomly, yeah. He's managed to find a way to do a lot of things on Blogger that people didn't think were possible. So I think kind of just pick, I definitely say start a Blogger because yeah. then you don't need to pay anyone to design your blog. It's really easy to use. Yourself. I end up paying for server space as well, like each month, whereas Blogger is completely free. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to cover is picking a blog name, which I think is such a toughie. And I think both me and Lou would say you kind of pick one and then a year or so down the line, you're like, why did I call it that? I picked my name in about 10 minutes at yeah. uni and instantly regretted it. But I think a lot of, we have a lot of blogger friends and I think everyone kind of hates the name of their yeah, blog. So true. don't worry too much about it I'd say. But um try and pick something that you like at the time. So it's not too on trend because you don't want it to kind of go out of fashion. Yeah and keep it unique and not too similar to anyone else's mm. I think is also a good tip. And Lily actually changed her yeah. name. So it's not the end of the world if you end up really really hating your blog name it's possible to change it. So, Definitely. That's cool. so if you're looking to kind of redesign your blog or thinking about the layout, we have a few tips on the design. My top tip would be to keep your images quite big. Definitely. I think big images just are beautiful. Yeah. And I think it's quite nice to have quite a visual based blog, whatever your subject matter is. Definitely make sure they fill the width of the post so that looks really tidy and nice. Yeah, it's good. I'd say keep the whole overall di design quite simple. Obviously, if you have favourite colours and stuff, incorporate them in. You want it to kind of be personal to you, but make it easy to read. I know there's some kind of research on like dark writing on a light background, yeah. slightly easier than light on dark. I actually think my background was black when I first started, really? but I realised it was quite hard to read, so I changed it. Just play around with it until you're happy, but I'd say keep it quite simple. Yeah, and also make sure that your social media icons are very like visible. Yeah. I think both of ours are both quite at the top, so you can easily find our Twitter pages and our YouTube and everything like that and then everyone can find everything they need. Definitely, when I find a blog that I love I always want to follow that person on Twitter as well because you kind of want to know everything. And I'm blog loving. Exactly, blog yeah. loving especially. I'd say make it easy for people to comment. One of my favourite parts about blogging are reading the comments. So yeah. whether you're on Blogger, make sure the comment system's working. Um, Anna uses Discus on WordPress. Yeah, Discus on WordPress. You can actually have that on Blogger as well. Oh, so okay. yeah, make it easy to comment and try and have it so you can reply if you want to. And also to have a design where people can easily scroll from one page to the next. Definitely. It's a good one because I know that I end up spending like hours 
on some people's blogs just pressing like next post, next post, yeah. next post and actually reading the whole thing so that's a really good feature to have. I think so, if you're going to invest in one thing because I think you have to get someone to design that, that's definitely a good one I think. So we're going to talk about kind of blogging equipment and set up in a later video but really all you need is a camera and a computer, it's as easy as that and you don't even need some kind of fancy SLR thing as well but we will talk about that at a later date. So when it comes to editing photos you don't need any kind of fancy Photoshop, I have no idea how to use Photoshop, I don't own it, no. it just confuses the hell out of me. No, I wish I did. Exactly, we don't really edit our photos, something I like to do is make sure I really like the photo as I'm taking it so that there's not much editing is required but yeah. if we do I think with both, both of us we just kind of resize the image, crop it, sometimes make it a bit brighter because it's so dark in the UK. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only thing I ever do is the like brighten button on yeah. my photo. I might press, 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 just to sort of brighten things up and make white things look a little bit whiter. And yeah, cropping and resizing. But aside from that, I think that's really all I do. I'm like Lily, I would take like 20 photos of the same product. And usually, you know what, it's always the last photo. Always. Always the last photo. You, always, you get yeah. it, you're like, yeah, that's the one. And then the minute I know that I've got the one, I just move on to the next exactly. thing. So usually, there's kind of only one I really like anyway, so it's really easy to edit them If down. you work on the composition, then you'll probably be happy with the finished product. When it comes to content, I think the main thing is just to be quite creative and be very unique and write a blog that you would like to read. That's always what I try and do with mine anyway. Definitely. Don't be afraid to have your own opinion because that's there are so many blogs yeah. and we all love reading hundreds of blogs but that's what will make you stand out is having your own opinion. No one else will have the same voice as you so don't yeah, be afraid to say what you think. And also be quite consistent whether it's once a week on a Friday at four and that's when you post. I think it's good for people to know when you're posting you can come back like we both put ours up quite early every morning, seven days a week. <laughs> At like, was it seven? Mine seven in the morning. Something quite consistent, like yeah. a good little schedule is good. Even if it's like once every two weeks. And then tell your readers about it as well. If you upload yeah. every Friday, tell them so they know when to check back. That's true. Also, put yourself in the reader's position. So try and post stuff that you think will be helpful to them. A photo, if you're thinking about taking a photo, will this actually help them see the product or is it going to add to the post? Just try and put yourself in their position. Um, I think if you write a blog, you read a blog too, so you kind of know yeah. that. So we mentioned this in Anna's first video as well, but obviously sign up to all the social media platforms that you would like to and promote your blog across all of them. Yeah, we've got Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. I don't really use Pinterest and Tumblr, but they're good platforms to use as well. They're good ones as well. So make sure you've kind of got the same username if you can across everything. That would be really helpful because then people will be able to find you on everything. Exactly. If you're going to be working so hard on a blog, you might as well tell everyone about it and promote it. But also make sure the social media platforms have a link to your blog as well. So your Twitter profile, your Instagram profile, yeah. put a link. So if people follow you on there, they're like, oh, they also have a blog. It's all about keeping everything connected. Definitely. I think one of the main things to take away from these videos is Google it research it because we're very, we're very self-taught in everything that we do like it's not like anyone ever told us how to use iPhoto or anything I learned all of that through YouTube videos or just googling things googling things you will be able to find an answer there somewhere whether it's a YouTube video or in the answer to a Yahoo questions. Yeah. Do you ever find that sometimes? Seriously, my techie, really handy. my techie friend from uni used to always say to me just google that exact question <laughs> it used to drive me insane because I knew he knew the answer but it's true if you type in how do I move my comment system on Blogger? Yeah. It will come up, like literally right in exactly what your question is. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. We're just going to leave you with a few tips to sum it up. The first one would be it's all about the content, so keep it creative and original to you and unique. Also with your blog name, try and make everything match, so make your social media names match your blog if you can. My tips would be Google it. Google is like your best friend when it comes to these kinds of things. And also promote your blog because if you don't, no one else will unless you have some really nice family members or something. Exactly. So if you want to see the video we did on Anna's channel about how to start a YouTube channel, click on her lovely face here. Thanks. And don't forget to check back on Sunday for the second video and then on Tuesday for the third one. Yeah, I think the next um, kind of subject we'll be covering is filming setups and all of our blogging equipment that we yeah. use, so it should be a good one. But I hope you've liked this video, I'd love to hear your feedback on this series and if you've got a channel or a blog then link it up below because we'd love to have a read. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Hi guys, so I'm here today again with Anna and this is our second instalment for our little guide to blogging and vlogging series. So if